we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, Rabbi Marvin Heyer, talking to us from California. He actually, in 1977, went to L.A. to create the Simon Wiesenthal Center. And under his leadership, the center has become one of the foremost human rights agencies in the world. Rabbi, it's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be on. So I actually want to focus today a little bit on the structure of charity and the like, because it's a financial issue. But before we get into that, could you just give us maybe a one or two minute background on what got you so inspired since you were born in America? Well, first, uh, let me say that uh, when I grew up on the Lower East Side, there were two subjects that were really discussed when I was going to yeshivas. One was the Holocaust, and the other was the State of Israel. State of Israel came into being in 1948. And I went to Yeshiva, elementary school, Yeshiva's Rabbeinu Shlomo Kluga, and then Yeshiva's Rabbeinu Yankiv Yosef in Henry Street on Lower East Side. Those two subjects were almost out of bounds. It was as if a Holocaust that the, we knew we knew that it happened. We should, could see on Yiska there were an inordinate amount of Kel Mole Rachmans made in the synagogue. So we knew and we heard sto- in, you know, stories about Gidolim and what happened to their cities and their families. But otherwise, it was as if it was like the Zohar, like a work of Kabbalah that is not supposed to be in common use. And I found that very strange and disturbing. I do find that strange and disturbing. (laughs) I I understood later why that was. And the same applied to the State of Israel. The State of Israel, in the world that I grew up, received scant coverage. Never in the early years did we have a representative of Israel or somebody come to the yeshivas to speak. We knew what was happening because you can, you either had access to your, uh, whether it was the, that time the Daily News, the Mira, the New York Times, the Post, you could find out, and maybe I'm a Jewish, but it, it wasn't on the front burner. And later when I became a rabbi in Vancouver and a director of Hillel at the same time while I was rabbi of the Orthodox Shul there, I, underst- I understood in a, in a sense why, because there are, great questions. People didn't know how to handle the issue of the Holocaust because the Holocaust, it wasn't something we wanted to discuss about how one third of all world Jewry was murdered. Mm -hmm. Where were the Jews? Where was America? Where was American Jews? And about the state of Israel, there was another problem. The problem the state of Israel was most of the leaders of the state of Israel were secular Jews. And in the in the, in the in the world of Torah, we would you would have expected you know after all if this would be the beginning of the redemption, final redemption of the Jewish people, going back to Eretz Yisrael, maybe that should have come from heaven, not from the Haganah. Mm-hmm. So these were the issues, and they affected my life. And I decided uh, that one thing, when I came down to L.A. to open a yeshiva, actually the original plan was to open a post-high school yeshiva. Subsequently, we added, a few months later, the creation of the Simon Wiesenthal Center. And actually, it all happened. The idea came to me when I was visiting the Toppets, and a young girl asked the question, Toppets is the place where the uh, there are traces, remaining traces of the skeletons of prehistoric creatures, the dinosaur age. And this young girl asked the guide at the Toppets whether the dinosaurs are coming back. <laughs> and the, dino- and the, the guide said no, because of it, does, it doesn't have the earth climate conditions have changed and it would be impossible for such a generation of creatures to come back. And uh, I said to myself, it's interesting that people want to know about 
creatures that can't come back. But what about human creatures like Hitler who can come back? Hmm. And, uh, you know, and that's where the seed came. That it's interesting to create such an institution in America. I see. So that actually sort of leads into the, the, the next half of of what I wanted to ask about. We're talking with Rabbi Marvin Heyer from the Simon Wiesenthal Center, the founder of it. Rabbi, at this stage, many people say it, it, the Holocaust was a terrible thing and there's been a huge amount of documentation and research and the high schools go visit Poland and they, they study. But are we, are we getting to the point where we have to relegate that story to the history books, not to erase it, but is the funding necessary? Is the money, is this the right place to be investing our money now when maybe we're done with that chapter? Well, first of all, without investing our money on, on the Holocaust, we're investing our money on the idea that caused the Holocaust, anti-Semitism. The anti-Semitism wasn't caused by you know, wasn't created by the engineers who put in the crematoria of Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. It was created by a society that thought that the Jews are unworthy of being a civilization. They're different. That notion is more alive, may be more alive in different parts of the world today than it was in the 30s. <laughs> in the 30s, it, only, it, was only, it was only in Europe. It, it, to a large extent, mm -hmm. where Hitler was born and he had this thing, he went to Austria. Today, you find anti-Semitism almost everywhere in the world. You surely have it in Russia today. You surely have it in the Ukraine today. You should have it in the Arab world today. You have it in the United States. So the, the cause, most people don't understand that Hitler was an anti-Semite before he was a final solutionist. And do you think it's a small step from the first to the second? I think that if you don't pay attention to the first step, it goes to the second and third step. Well, one of the comparisons... Now, that the, a lot the of fact of the matter is that in the early years, let's remember one thing. We have Hitler's first letter. Most people don't know that. They don't know that Hitler wrote a letter in 1919. Before Mein Kampf, Hitler never dreamed of Mein Kampf in 1919. But in 1919, he wrote a letter to Gemlich where he said, I'm against an emotional anti-Semitism that leads to pogroms on a street corner. What I'm in favor of is an intellectual anti-Semitism that requires a ruthless government whose purpose it would be to get rid of the Jews entirely. And he signed it mm -hmm. in 1919. <laughs> <laughs> and he then went on to write Mein Kampf, 23, 24. Then he got arrested. You know, he had that march, the putsch. Everybody knew what his philosophy was. But not enough people paid attention. And so it's wrong in a way. You know, I speak now, let's say, as an Orthodox rabbi. I think it's, we do a great injustice when we, 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 we short shrift and lay all the blame at the steps of the Almighty. And we say, we say that, Hashem Hashem kill Rachem Bechanun. Now, it is true that I don't know the answer to the question of where God was when Auschwitz was in operation. I don't know the answer to that question. But I do know the answer to one question. It is not correct to say that mankind had no advance notice about what the intentions of Hitler were. That is not true. And in the same way we have advance notice, you feel, right. by the, the we warnings have we're getting a, we, right now? We, we, that's right. Look, well, we have advance notice. We know the Iranians are up to no good. We all know that. So... You, you know, it's, it's easy to say, look, we say Hashem Hashem Kel Racham Vachanin, so why don't we put all that blame, say we don't understand why we have a covenant with God. 
Why he didn't save us? It's a good question. I don't have the answer to that question. But what I do have the answer to is it's important to teach young generations of Jews today. We had lots of advance notice as to what Hitler was up to. And do you think the we world... about it in... What's that? Uh, is the world at a stage today where it's in fact interested in these types of things? For example, we see what's going on, the slaughter that's going on in Syria, and the the up the, the changes happening in Ukraine. And it seems that the the opinion, you know, the, the polls seem to say that people are really interested in getting involved. And I, my feeling is this is very much how people weren't interested in getting involved. Uh, That's back, right. Back you, there's always there there are always a period of appeasement. We just acquired a letter written by Bertram Russell, 1937. He was a great, the great English philosopher and later went on to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. Russell wrote in 37 to a, to a friend in Eton College that if Hitler conquers England, the best thing we can do is every Englishman should invite the Nazis to their homes for dinner and the prime minister should kick it off by inviting the commander of the Nazis to turn Downing Street. <laughs> this was a naive view of history, oh my goodness. which says, you know, if you're nice to people like Hitler, they'll be nice to you. Yeah, I guess we've learned otherwise, haven't we? Rabbi, it's actually... Yeah. I, we, we've covered a number of issues. I was hoping to talk more about the, uh, okay. the the business side of the charity, but that's okay. I think we really covered a number of important okay. things, and we're just about out of time. So tell me in the last Thank minute, you. what's the best yeah. way for people to, to follow your work and to follow the work of the center? By going on to our website, www.wiesenthal.com, and there they'll see the international efforts and work of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, which includes a film division, two museums, a museum we're building in Israel, and we're not building it on the Holocaust because Yad Vashem is there. We're building it on the importance of Ben Odom L'Chavero and on the importance of paying attention to what's going on in your world today because it's often the key to what will happen tomorrow. Well, that sounds like very important work. Rabbi Heyer, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.